Jess and I met in September of 2012 when we both worked at Wild Bills here in Banff. She lives in Banff. Jess is a curious, bright, and passionate yogi of the Bow Valley, a Vancouver Island native with a love for turning new corners and exploring the world. Her infatuation with yoga took her on a journey to India in 2016, and ever since then, it has been a priority of hers to continue studying and practicing yoga through various different styles of trainings. Jess believes in the healing powers of connecting breath to movement and has a love for helping others to find and reveal their purpose. Besides yoga and travel, music, creative cuisine, and the ocean are the way to Jess's heart. And uh, I'm really grateful for Jess doing this today. This is a uh, a real gift having her leading us through this class. She's a experienced and passionate yoga teacher here in Banff. And this particular class has never been done online before, expansive yin. So Jess will be leading a beautiful yin yoga class. And at the same time, I will be doing universal spheres for everybody. And if you've never heard of universal spheres, that's quite all right. It's a pretty new energy tool that came about in 2011 and it's a way of having a direct and conscious connection with solution energy and it's a way to be even more supported and loved than we all are at all times and myself I'm a universal sphere instructor and universal sphere helps me to be very calm grounded and centered yet energized and it's the way I start my day and one of my students told me that for her it's like meditation on steroids. So um, during this class today, uh, I'd encourage you, or Jess and I would encourage you to put on your own playlist. So I'm gonna put up an example track from YouTube and it's, uh, it's an 852 megahertz calming, meta, um, essentially non-vocal instrumentals, what I meant to say. Um, but yeah, you can put on relaxing yin music. You could just type in yin music in Spotify or even as Jess shared before, she has a playlist on Spotify called Sync and Melt In. So if you are on Spotify, um, you can bring that up. The picture is a girl in a heart and that's Sync and Melt Yin. And uh, Or you can go to YouTube, Apple Music and type in yin music or meditation music. So, so again, have music on your own. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jess. Once again, thank you very much, Jess. I'll put the view on her. And I really am excited about this. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. I can't believe we met in 2012. I thought it was a long time ago. 16 or something. I don't know. Time flies, man. It's crazy. Um, thanks for having me. It's a real honor to be a part of this. I'm super flattered that you asked me to join. As Scott said, I have been studying yoga for many years now, and I have a massive place in my heart for yin yoga. I have also been a student of Scott's through his Universal Sphere workshops. I took a three-day workshop by Scott, I don't know, many years ago now in Banff, and Universal Sphere is something that I do truly believe in. It's really powerful, and sure, you can relate it to the meditation on steroids metaphor. It's just a really nice accompaniment to this yin practice. We will begin our practice in a comfortable seat. So I have a bolster propped up underneath me. You might like something under your pelvic floor, you might not. I like to have something underneath my sitting bones so that it encourages my knees to fall heavy. Play around with your sitting bones here, ground down. And then lengthen through your spine, pop up your chest slightly. Bring your shoulders down your back, bring your ears over your shoulders, sit tall and close your eyes. Take a big inhale through your nose and let out your mouth with a sigh. Another big inhale through your nose. Another long exhale out your mouth, sigh. One more big inhale through the nose, fill. Exhale, sigh it out. 
Give your fingers a little wiggle, give your toes a little wiggle. And just ensure that your body is soft. Get heavy, get grounded, get weighty through everything that is touching a prop or the floor or the earth. So heavy through your sitting bones, heavy through your ankle bones, heavy through your shins perhaps. And then inviting in a soft sense of buoyancy, of lightness through your back body, through your front body, your side bodies, your shoulders, your neck, your face, your head. Down through your arms, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers. Make it soft. Make a wide O shape with your jaw and then wiggle the bottom half of your jaw from side to side. It looks funny, no one can see you. You're home in your living room. So just wiggle your jaw from side to side and then allow your jaw to slap. So letting go of any and all tension or gripping or holding. And then just beginning to drop inwards. Beginning to drop into your breath and beginning to slow things right down. So just sitting and settling into your practice today. Just finding a rhythm of breath. So a natural and fluid breath that resonates with you. Nothing restricted, nothing controlled, simply inhaling and simply exhaling. So as the days begin to darken, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere right now, as the days begin to darken and shorten, nature calls on us to turn inward into this very season of yin. So the yin season is the winter season. It's when our days get shorter and darker and we turn inward, we bring our energy in and we hold it in. So I like to think of it as creating space within my body to physically hold my yin practice, to keep it warm, to keep it contained, to keep it inward. So this is a perfect time of year to put some energy into our thoughts, into our reasons, and to really cultivate a sense of surrendering into our bodies, into our practice. Allowing our breath to flow in and out just as it does. So where does your mind start to wander when you think of the days getting shorter and darker? For some of us, for many of us, it's comforting. It's kind of cool. It's warm. We like it. For a lot of other people, it creates anxiety. It makes us sad and scared and, oh my goodness, I need to go somewhere hot immediately because it's dark here. So no judgments or criticisms in either direction, but just bringing your mind's eye to what you feel. How does this winter yin season resonate with you? So you might be able to feel some energy coming towards you right now from Scott's universal sphere practice. You might feel these invigorating sparks flowing through your body. You might be getting warmer and happier and calmer. Taking a few more breaths seated just as you are. Coming to flutter some light into your eyes.
Take a big inhale through your nose and let it out with a sigh. Coming to plant your palms out in front of your body and really slowly, really carefully rolling off of any crop you may have had. And uncrossing your legs, making your way into a tabletop position. Stack your shoulders over your wrists, stack your hips over your knees. Take a big inhale, drop your belly, lift your eyes, swing your heart forward. Exhale, round your spine, press the floor away. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your eyes. Exhale, round your spine, press the floor away. One more time, big inhale, drop your belly, lift your eyes. Exhale, round your spine, press the floor away. Make your way back to a neutral spine. Up to you whether you tuck your toes under or have the tops of your feet pressing down. We'll be coming into Anahata melting heart pose. So keeping your hips lifted above your knees. If you have a bolster or blankets or towels or pillows, anything else nearby that you might like to place under your chest for support by all means, and if not, that's fine. Walk your fingertips forward, lengthen through your side bodies, and then begin to drop your chest down. So you might place your chin to the mat, you might place your forehead to the mat, you might take a block or a book or something to rest your head on. If there's any pinching or tingling through your shoulders, through your arms, make a wider Y shape with your arms. So walking your fingertips to the outside edges of your mat. Take a big inhale through your nose and let it go with a sigh. Allow your heart to melt, to sink. Getting heavy, getting weighty, as if there's weights on your rib cages, drop your rib cages, drop your rib cages down into the mat. Invite in a subtle sense of buoyancy through your back body. So working with those dualities, we're getting heavy through the front, we're pulling ourselves down, but we're getting light and airy through the back of our body. So depending on where you're feeling this natural pull, you might send your breath into your rib cage, or you might send your breath into your spine. Relax any tension through your face. Relax any tension through your jaw, your fingers, your toes, your shins. So the calmer that we become, not necessarily the quieter, but the calmer that we become, the easier it is for us to operate from a place of love rather than operating from a place of fear, right? So whether we operate from a place of love or a place of fear, it's a ripple effect that flows through every single person that we interact with. We all know the abrupt and uncertain and scary and loud feeling that we're left with after having an interaction with somebody who was operating from a place of fear. Just as well, we all know the calm and warm and quiet and happy and tranquil feeling that we feel after operating from a place of love from the person that you are speaking to from their end. So it's a big difference to operate from a place of love or a place of fear when you are projecting that onto somebody else. People notice it. People feel it. For many of us, it's hard to ground, it's hard to center ourselves. And if that's the case for you, 
Don't beat yourself up over it. No judgments, no criticisms. But an internal question to ponder throughout the rest of this class, potentially throughout the rest of this day. Where and how could you shift? Where and how could you shift just a little in a direction that allows you to operate from a place of love rather than from a place of fear? So just shifting a small amount in one direction or the other if you feel that you might operate from a place of fear. And stuff is scary right now. Stuff is fearful right now. That's okay, but it doesn't have to dictate our lives and it doesn't need to dictate how we project ourselves onto our others. So how could you shift just a little to be operating from a place of love rather than from a place of fear? Take a big breath in through your nose. And let it out with a sigh. Really slowly pressing into your palms. Slow, slow, slow. Begin to walk your hands back in towards you. Lifting your body back up to a tabletop position. From here, we'll make our way into a wide knee child's pose, bringing your big toes to touch, moving any props that you may have had off to the side. Widen your knees and allow your knees to travel off the edges of the mat. Begin to walk your hands forward. Again, a wider Y shape with your arms feels nice on my shoulders. Hopefully it does on yours as well. Drop your forehead or drop a cheek. So lengthening all the way from the tip of your tailbone all the way up through your spine, your shoulders, the nape of your neck, the crown of your head. May I choose love over fear. If for nothing else, may I choose love over fear. So they say that fear is like a contraction, a pulling away or a closing off. And fear is essentially a perpetual comparison. Love is the opposite. Love is a big expansion. Love is an opening up to, and it is creating endless possibilities. And love is, at the end of the day, vulnerability at its finest. The oldest tools of presence are holding and listening. These are the instruments of attention that never seem to fail us as humans. So when we can attend what is before us, we become immersed. No one can become fully immersed without being brought alive. So essentially moving from that place from fear into a realm of love, just shifting ever so slightly. Drop your heart a little further down towards the mat. Drop your sitting bones a little closer towards your heels. What would it take to soften through your face? And then really slowly begin to walk your hands back in towards you, lifting your sitting bones up from your heels, making your way back into a tabletop position. Stacking your ankles behind your knees. Tucking your toes, make your way up into a downward facing dog. 
So this should look like an upside down V. And you can pedal out your legs here, sway your hips, bend your knees, shake your head yes, shake your head no. Create equal pressure down through the palm of your hands. And sure, it would be nice to get our heels towards the mat one day. But more importantly, think of creating one long line from the tip of your tailbone to the crown of your head. Drop your heart. Bring your gaze forward, pull yourself forward to a high plank and then make your way down onto your bellies. From here, we will enter Sphinx pose. If you know seal, by all means, take it. As always, if you would like something under your rib cage, under your chest for support, place something under there now. Walking your elbows out in front of your shoulders, all 10 fingers point forward. Press your belly button down into the earth. Create a pool-like feeling through your back body. Shrug your shoulders down your back, get tall through your neck. Take a big inhale through your nose. And let it out with a sigh. Close your eyes, find stillness. So drop your rib cage, just like at the beginning of the class, when we pictured having weights on our rib cage, find that, recreate that. Get heavy through the, the front body, get light and buoyant through the back body. So it's that downward earthy pull coming from our front body. And it's that heavenly upward pull coming from our back body. So just like everything else in life, Yin and yang are each other's duality. So that heaviness through the front body, that lightness through the back body, yin and yang. Much like lunar and solar, noise and silence, light and dark. So where does your mind go when you start to think about these things, do you immediately jump to one? Do you say, oh, I like light more than I like dark. I like solar more than I like lunar. You're allowed to have a favorite, that's fine. As long as you're operating from a place of love rather than from a place of fear. May I choose love over fear. Just that. May I choose love over fear. If you want the moon, do not hide from the night. If you want a rose, do not run from the thorns. And if you want love, do not hide from yourself. Take a big inhale through your nose. And let it go with a sigh. If you had anything underneath your chest, slide it off to the side and slinky yourselves down onto your chest to lie flat on your bellies. Your arms could be stretched out in front, they could be reached behind. And it might feel nice for complete stillness within the body or maybe you bend your knees, windshield wiper from side to side. And now with as little effort as possible, 
pressing your way back up to a tabletop position. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. Take a big inhale, drop your belly, lift your eyes. Exhale, round your spine, press the floor away. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your eyes. Exhale, round your spine, press the floor away. One more time, drop your belly, lift your eyes. Exhale, round, chin to chest. Making your way back to a neutral spine. Cross your ankles, come down onto your sitting bones and sit tall. Bring your hands to heart center, bow your chin towards your chest. May I choose love over fear. Today, tomorrow, the next day, every day, may I choose love over fear. Thank you for sharing your practice today. Thank you, Scott, for the universal spheres. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Jess. And for those of you who are doing this live with us or at a later time, if you're still feeling like you're coming back to the space, that's quite all right. And, you know, both Jess and I would love to hear your feedback. So for those of you who have uh, participated in this expansive yin, first time it's been done online, um, please comment below, you know, how was it? What was your experience? And for those of you who would like to connect more with Jess, um, make sure you check out her Instagram. She's got some amazing stuff on there. And she's, uh, I'm excited for Jess's 2021. She's doing a lot of things right now, which we'll keep private. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of good things on the horizon, even better things for Jess coming up. And again, huge thank you to Jess for being open to doing this and leading this class and uh, having this beautiful visual space with the Christmas tree and the plant. And uh, it's a very welcoming visual that we have here. And, uh, and yeah, and then for, for those of you who are curious about Universal Sphere, there is a link I put below for the events on, uh, on my business Facebook page related to Universal Sphere. There's some free events coming up and there's some trainings coming up. And uh, yeah, so if you're all curious, Take a look at those. So once again, thank you so much, Jess. Create a wonderful rest, rest of your day over there, Jess. And uh, we'll see you later. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. See you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Scott. Bye-bye.